and I highlight all the X's, then we could highlight all of the Y's, and then we can highlight all of the normal numbers, and then we could look at all the negative signs. And then what we can do is just put all of the same colors together. So let's start with the blues. So those are just normal numbers. So it's 3 times 2, because remember I've got this little dot down here. That's a way of showing times. So it's 3 times 2, which is 6, and 6 times 9 is 54. Next, I'm going to do the x's. So now we've got three different x's. Now, what you do with those exponents is you add them. All right. So that's good. And then over here, there is a imaginary one. So then it's going to be 2 plus 1 minus 1. 2 plus 1 minus 1 is 2. So that's going to be x to the power of 2. There is only one y, so that'll just be a y. And then I'll just look at the negatives, where there's only one negative. And so if you only have one negative, then the answer is a negative. And that'll be the answer for that one. Now we can start with number two. So I'm going to do the same approach. I'm going to highlight all of the same things. So I'm going to start by highlighting all the numbers for this one. I might have used a different color to what I used for the numbers in the previous question, but each question is going to be different. I can't remember what colors I'm using for each one. But what I'm going to highlight next will be all the A's. Then I'll highlight all the B's. And then it appears all that's left to highlight would be the negatives. Notice when I say negatives, I'm not talking about the negative exponents. All right. And so now that we have highlighted everything, we can simply go put everything together. So I'm going to start by putting all the numbers together. And now we are ready to start calculating. So I'm going to look at all the yellow ones first, which is all the normal numbers. So remember, those aren't exponents, so you treat them normally. So it's 4 times 2, which is 8, times by 3, which is 24, divided by the 24 at the bottom, which gives you 1. Then I'm going to look at all the, the blue A's. So that's A2 at the top, times by another A at the top, times by another A at the top, which is A4. And then there's an A3 at the bottom. So remember the laws of exponents says that that'll, you have to minus the exponents. And so it's going to be a to the power of 4 minus 3. And 4 minus 3 is 1. So that's just going to give us an a. Then the b's, we have a b to the power of 1 at the top. Then we have a b minus 1 at the bottom. And remember the laws of exponents says that you have to say that you have to minus when the one's at the top and the one's at the bottom. So it's going to be 1 minus minus 1. And so those two minuses are actually going to turn into a plus. So you're going to end up with b to the power of 2. Then we need to look at the number of negatives, and in which case there's only 1. And 1 negative makes the whole answer a negative. And there's your answer, negative 1ab squared. Moving on to number 3. I'm going to highlight all the different parts within the bracket. I'll start by highlighting the numbers. I'll then highlight all the x's, and then lastly the y's. All right, and then we'll just go through each part separately. So that yellow 2, so, so that's going to be 2 to the power of 2, because remember this 2 on the outside is for each of these things. So it's for the 2, it's for the x, and it's for the y. So 2 to the power of 2 is 4, x to the power of 3 with a 2 on the outside, like this, the laws of exponents says that we would multiply these two together, and that's going to give you x6. And then the, if you multiply the y's exponent by 2, you get y to the power of minus 4. So please remember that this 2 on the outside is for everything in the bracket. That's what the bracket's there for. It's to tell you that that 2 is for all of them. The last thing we'd have to do is just make sure that we don't have any negative exponents, but in this case we do. And so to correct that, you would just take that part, so the so that minus 4 is for the y. So you'll take that whole part to the bottom. And so the final answer will be 4x6 over y to the power of 4. We're now going to move on to number 4. 
And so once again, I'm going to, well now I'm actually going to um, not do all the highlighting. I just did that for the first three, just to let you see the idea. But obviously in a test, I mean, if you want to do the highlighting and you become really fast at it, it shouldn't be a problem. But in test, we typically need to save as much time as we can. So for now, if you're more than welcome to at home, um, but what, what you'll realize is as you practice the highlighting method, you'll begin to see what's happening and you won't need to use the highlighting method as often and so you'll save yourself some time and so typically we would start with the two in the front and you can remember you can remember that if you want to stick to the proper rules of exponents this two over here has got the exponent of of one and so if you multiply these two exponents together or these two numbers you'd get two to the power of minus two then I'm going to do the x1, which is 3 times by minus 2, which is minus 6. And then the y part would be minus 2 times minus 2, which is 4. We would then scan along and see if there's any negative exponents, in which case there's 2. There's this one that has a negative exponent and this one. And so both of those will go to the bottom. And so the final answer will have the y4 at the top, 2 to the power of a positive 2 at the bottom and x to a positive 6 at the bottom. Then we can see that this 2 to the power of 2 is the same as 4 and so we can write the answer as y4 over 4 x6. With the previous question I just want to quickly mention something. This 2 over here we simply said 2 to the power of 2 is 4 but if you don't know that or if you didn't if you don't want to have to remember that you could have just wrote it as 2 to the power of 2 in the beginning and then at a later stage converted that to a 4. And now moving on to number 5. So when you've got a fraction inside a bracket like this with a, where an exponent is on the outside just do exactly the same as what you have been doing. And so let's start with the 2. The 2 will be 2 to the power of minus 1. How do I know that? Because the 2 actually has an exponent of 1 and so you just multiply. Then the x will be has a minus 1 and so you multiply it with that minus 1. Minus 1 times minus 1 is just a positive 1. And then all you do is you just say over and then you do the same with the y. So 2 times minus 1 is just y to the minus 2. We then look and see if anything has a negative exponent. So we see a negative exponent over here and over here. And so those positions must just swap. But now, please remember, what is connected to this minus 1? It's this whole 2 over here and this whole y is connected. So that whole, those whole parts have to move. And so the x that's already there will stay at the top. The y minus 2 at the bottom will now go to the top. And the 2 to the power of minus 1 will now go to the bottom as 2 to the power of 1. And that will be the final answer. Some people I know would first want to fix up the inside bracket by taking the x to the bottom. That is absolutely fine. It all works out at the end if you just stick to the say if you just stick to the correct mathematical concepts then you'll still get the same answer there's there's more than one way of doing these questions so if you're ever in class and your teacher's doing it one way but you're getting the same answer then it's absolutely fine